and uh, welcome back to the breakfast on plus tv africa first major conversation this morning is going to be discussing um, of course the biggest story across nigeria today which is the attack on the abuja kaduna rail line uh, the nrc has currently suspended rail travel uh, until they're able to figure things out and uh, you know ensure that it is safe for passengers we're speaking this morning with Yehuza Getso, who is uh, an intelligence and anti-terrorism expert who was also on that train when the attack happened. Mr. Getso, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. How are you? Very well. Um, Thank and, you for having me. Yes, and of course, I would, as always, start by saying, you know, we're glad that, you know, it wasn't worse than if it, that, um, it happened yesterday. And we still have you here with us. Um, so I, I want you to start with sharing exactly what transpired on that train, you know, and how did you and every other person make it to safety? Well, actually, uh, it is only the 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 the, 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 the thing is, uh, who is riding the that, that is the driver of the train that he, uh, will be able to provide a clear explanation of what transpired. Uh, because uh, what happens, it happens as a front, and it affects mainly and only the, the, the front force. It doesn't affect the other forces. So there was no cheating, sporadic cheating as people are, are, are talking about. Uh, even if it, there was, it happened as the only as the front. Uh, where the, the government uh, detonated, or the bomb or whatever detonated, uh, but there was no sporadic cheating around the other forces of the friend. So that's what the really can say. So, but uh, it still continues to run up to some kilometers before it stopped. And then uh, everybody got scared before what happened, uh, later happened and uh, people uh, were supported and then necessary arrangements were made and then uh, the people moved. Okay, but uh, would you say that this attack is a terrorist attack or you would uh, describe it as an attack from bandits because there's been a lot of back and forth whether or not this is a terrorist attack or it's actually uh, that from the bandits? Well, I, I think whether the Nigerian government declared the bandits as terrorists or they didn't declare them as terrorists as far as I'm concerned, they are all terrorists because anybody who Volunteer or who commits himself in conducting violent activities is a terror. So, as far as uh, I'm concerned, uh, whosoever uh, or have, uh, have done so must have a, a, a very organized criminal psychology, a very organized criminal orientation, a very organized criminal strategy, a very organized criminal syndicate. A well prepared and a well planned activity before it gets to the end. So that's what I mean. Uh, so whether we, 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 we have had that, uh, that we know that bandits own so many sophisticated and dangerous arms and they are not supposed to have, and that is exactly what other terrors are telling. Uh, that is why I'm disputing the position of the government of the United States, on the, on the position that uh, asking or making a clarion call or asking the government to declare bandits as a terrorist. Whether they are declared, are declared as terrorists or not, they are still terrorists. What happens to the terrorists to the ICOM that has been declared as terrorists? What happens to the Boko Haram that has been declared as terrorists? We have not seen any security agents uh, being able to manage the issues in the North 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 I, I think they are misguiding him and misguiding other politicians. Uh, so, uh, the Democrats are not making make submission that uh, okay, what is really transparent in this forest. And I keep making 
uh, attachments are not only attaching to other people. I keep making it very clear that our species as well don't have good knowledge of what this forest is all about, and especially the connection between one belt and another, between one community and another, one local government and another, one state and another. So, and uh, this new uh, kind of um, uh, conditions or approach to security that has been introduced by the Amparasoko, Kuna, Kaduna, and Niger for closing market, shutting off network, and so on and so forth, uh, stopping selling the support in the China. So, it's changing shadow. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of resources. It's the abortion of attention. They know what they're supposed to do. The technocrats, the security technocrats, and we, the professional, we're supposed to have tell them the blunt truth. It's supposed to be that, and they know. They know that all these criminals, everybody knows their address, everybody knows where they are. That is why yesterday, when I had the announcement that Chief of ABC, the Chief of Anita, that he instructed that uh, Ari should go after the bandits to order their club. I don't know. Because well, why do you have the personnel to do that? Okay, uh, do they have the capacity? Do they have the gadget? Do they have the equipment? Do they have the technology? Do they have the, the, the orientation? Okay, so, so just as a follow-up. So many questions. Okay, so just as a follow-up to the question, can you please help us understand the difference between uh, vandals, terrorists, and bandits? Because uh, we have the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, on national TV on another platform saying that uh, for bandits to be called terrorists, they need to bear a flag. What is the difference? Can you help us understand the difference between uh, vandals, terrorists, and bandits? Well, for the definition, the literal definition and the uh, grammatical definition may be far. So probably from what I understand, government is uh, uh, a kind of um, differentiating them by grammatical, uh, probably uh, the, the linguistic aspect. Uh, that is you call bandits for those people who are vandalizing and making destruction. And you call people terrorists, uh, uh, probably because they have one link or one syndicate uh, and another. But the problem with Nigerian government is there was never any research, any research that you can you can you can lay your hands on as as a kind of um, a root cause research, root cause analysis, background research that has uh, has been conducted in order to test and testify that this is a bandit, this is terrorist, or whatever. So the classification in this is they do make a kind of a general description. That is what I take Lai Mohammed. And Lai Mohammed doesn't have any experience, and then um, he didn't go through the, 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 the kind of experience and expertise to come out and tell us that, that these are bandits and these are terrorists. Right. But as far as we are concerned, professionally, uh, anybody who is committing a violent act that is leading to the destruction of life, uh, property, and creating uh, insecurity, uh, 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 participating for whatever major that is leading to uh, making people to feel unsafe, is a terror. All right, Mr. Getzo. Um you, we're going to go, you know, talk a little bit more about this, you know, this aspect um, and I, properly identifying them and knowing what must be done. Uh, but I want us to go back to, you know, the incident. Uh, you said that, um, you know, the train was still in, in motion for a couple of more kilometers before it stopped. So can you clarify for us if it was stopped by the driver or it was stopped because of the damage done to the, um, the front carriage of, uh, of the train? I think, uh, you know, at that kind of uh, chaotic situation, uh, everybody is thinking of kind of what will be his step. How am I going to set to, to get myself to set line? What yes. will really happen? So, uh, if any passenger in that step, if, you know it happens at night. It didn't happen in the real time. So, it's a kind of confusion that 
nobody, anybody that can give you any information, any accurate information is, is trying to tell you a, a kind of a lie or to create story. But it is only the authority, and probably if they have a CCTV or they have any system, and you know the sun is not a very long light, a very bright, so probably with that and uh, through the CCTV, you can be able to extract some valuable information that uh, one can lay the time on and then make analysis with. I didn't lay my hand on it, so I cannot uh, uh, bring any further explanation. Mm, that's from the video piece that you see and I, uh, it is very clear. That's a very important thing. That's why people see and that's why the incident happened and it even affects any part of other courts. So okay. it happens, it affects only the front uh, court which is at the index and the, which is the control of the, of, uh, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the trend. Okay. Um, so that's all. So, so, so what does... Just a of life. Yeah, so can, can you share with us, I mean, you're, you're an intelligence and anti-terrorism expert. Can you share with us what this means? Um, the, the fact that bandits are now going after rail lines. Does this in any way mean that, you know, they no longer have enough people on the roads to attack? And so they are trying to get those rails, uh, you know, damaged so that people can go back to the roads. Or does it really just mean that they, you know, their, their powers and the, the audacity that they have is, is growing? And so they are now going after even trains. I think it's making it more clear uh, for what uh, I have been talking about and um, my life, that uh, it is uh, exposing the inability, incapability, Lack of political will, uh, of, of Muhammad Buhari administration, and lack of political will. Uh, because, yes, of course, you know, the economy in the country is so harsh and so terrible. So, these guys were conducting their activities by conducting kidnapping for Russia in the remote locations of our village in the northwestern part and northeastern, and north central and part of northeast other part of the country, targeting the markets in the, in the village. First of all, targeting the those who have cattle, rustling their cattle and taking them to sell and make hell out of it. Then they move into the next step, whereby they are kidnapping people uh, at the remote locations, villages, then towns, then urban and uh, semi-urban and they started affecting the city. So it has been realized that who is the signature for ransom? That ransom is not forthcoming because they were kidnapping the wrong people. Because they were kidnapping people who are struggling to eat, struggling to survive, who are struggling to have a free experiment in a day, not people that have the money. So it has been realized that a uh, 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 government has not been paying attention to them. So how will, what will they do to create and who force the government to create, to have attention, to pay attention on what they are doing? Then probably a dialogue will be, a, a, a real dialogue will be conducted or a real fight will be conducted and um, that is to some, part, uh, to some extent. So, and they realize that this elite who has the real money who have the real capacity in uh, using this trend, especially the people of the authority. So, by, by making it, by attacking the trend, it has given a larger uh, and a more wider attention. So, the scope of the attention is now from the federal government, the state government, and then the elite. So, the pressure will be high that will be mounted by both the elite and uh, the people uh, on the authority, as well as the other influencers and their finances. In addition, there are six things that I want every Nigerian to not only the people on the authority, but not only the elite, but not only the people in the, 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 the position of their finances. Uh, this six things is that one, uh, Nigeria is facing uh, unknown enemies 
that is the bilateral enemy. Secondly, Nigeria is facing another unknown enemy, that is the multilateral enemy, and both are the conflicting kind of a, a, a conflict between the, the front of one and the, the angle of one nation in the in, in rest of the, the struggle for the, the economy, the economic survival, uh, struggle for power survival, and so on and so forth. Then number three, uh, we have internal uh, incapability, whereby uh, uh, almost more than 80 to 90 percent of the skill of men they are not capable, they are, they, are, they are handicapped because they don't have the skill, they don't have passion, they are not patriotic. And number four, there is no modernization, there was no any effort made by Nigeria. The only thing that is happening is Nigerian government is increasing money, but they were not really adequate to of tracking and checking whether this money is being utilized in the process of dealing with this either by this terrorist or whatever you call them. And then number five, the, the corruption in the, in the in the cycle of the security agent is becoming has become so enormous to the extent that uh, you, you remember the Minister of Finance just mentioned that within, uh, within a couple of months has given uh, uh, almost two to million for them at the moment. And then the chief of uh, the uh, national uh, uh, security advisor has made mention that this amount of money has been given. And then also, if I look at the budget presented by the President of the Republic of Nigeria for the 2020 uh, you know, I, I, I tried it here. Where are we taking that money? It's as if we are building the money. And then I challenged the Hara administration from all the budgets they had made for security and other aspects. So, particularly on the second scale, we have seen, which is very clear that the, the money is uh, projected into the general government account. So, what happens to implementation of that budget? So, that means that the budget for security that has been done for 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021, we know we have the figures and we have seen the influence of all the money that is coming through the revenue through the oil through whatever. So and the focus of the budget is based on that. So you see you have the money. Why didn't you utilize the money and still the security situation is deteriorating in the country? And then finally number two. The, the government, the federal government, the lack of the synchronization between the federal government, state government and the local government. Even though you can say that you don't even have local government. Because what we have is all I can not the first place. And nobody says. So as far as I'm concerned, the local government is, is, is just by there by hand. But in actual thing, there is no informality relationship in terms of the approach being used. Even the government themselves. If you look at what is happening between Governor Erefai, uh, the uh, governor of uh, Zafara, that's a Chocotu, that's a Sakana, that's of Niger, they are kind of being uh, busy competing with one another, not really confronting the security challenge that is affecting the, the larger population. Okay. Uh, could he also be, let's look at, the, you know, this particular school of thought. They believe that, you know, when uh, insurgents want to cripple a system, they target infrastructure, and that's, this is a public infrastructure. Could it also be that this is actually the, uh, you know, the end game for uh, this group of persons? Sorry, go again. Yahoo can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. Now, what I'm saying, you have some school of thoughts that believe that for insurgents, usually the target is always uh, to cripple the entire system. They begin to target public infrastructure. Now, could this mm -hmm. also mean that this is also another means, this is what their end goal, end goal is, targeting public infrastructure? Could, it be, could this be the aim of this attack, to cripple the system by targeting government infrastructures? You know, we have internal conflict within the country. So this internal conflict can be 
the target, the priority, the, the primary target, why these attacks were conducted. We have issues of uh, banding, it may be the target. We have issues of foreign forces, it may be the target. We have issues around the, 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 the kind of uh, 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 trouble case between the government agencies. It can be the most, the, the, the most motivating factor why this kind of attack. So, if government, if we really have a serious intelligence, I expect them probably within 48 hours to come out with a blueprint that will tell the that government will tell the public what training transpired. But now, for anybody to, to kind of uh, say that the target is to attack the public infrastructure, who is attacking it? Intelligence must work hard to check who is who, who does this and then what is the motive. That's the only uh, justification we can have to say yes. The attack is on the infrastructure. Because if you really do guys want to target the infrastructure, you have so many public infrastructures that are in the far places, far away, where you, are, you don't have any security partners because you don't have enough access to partners to manage the security So they can have attacked uh, colleges of education, they can have attacked other federal institutions which is more easier, they could have attacked many other things that are more expensive. Remember that you have an NPC refinery in Sabina, which is far away from Sabina. So if really the, the target is to attack the public infrastructure, they could have attacked the, the NPC uh, refinery in Sabina. And they could have attacked our development university more directly than indirectly that they are igniting one to three lecturers and their families. And you have so many other public infrastructures around Kaduna that could have been uh, uh, attacked or could have been terrorized. So I didn't believe that the target is to uh, hit the, 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 the public uh, infrastructure alone. I'm looking at this in, in a diverse way, which can only be proved by the intelligence findings, which I expect if Nigeria is really a serious country that manages uh, uh, conduct, uh, use, use intelligence to, 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 to manage information and manage intelligence, I expect them to provide at least intelligence to release, just a hint, for the, for, 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 to build the public confidence and remobilize people. Because many people will not use the train again in their life. You rest assured. Many people will prefer to fly from Kano, from Sakana, from Tokyo. Many people will look from Sakana, Go to the airport, I mean, for the international airport, and fly to Abuja from there. Then I will use the best. So it will also affect the performance of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the performance of the utilization of the test. Or rather, a, a common man will only be using it if they cannot conduct the scale the Sabina which they have justified just to testify and justify to everybody that. Nigerian security cannot manage and cannot provide security and safety, which really explains that uh, the government, the moment where the government fell in its promises, working, especially in respect to security of life and property. Okay, Mr. Getsu, talk a little bit yes. more because I'm, I'm really just looking at the you know very very intricate details on it, on you know this um, incident. Talk a little bit more about the explosives um, and the, the fact that they are using explosives now. I remember that in, in, in quite a while we've not heard of a bomb blasts going on in northern Nigeria. It used to be the, um, you know, the uh, method of operation, uh, mostly Boko Haram's method of operation, um, you know, all the way till 2014, you know, and a little bit of 2015, I believe. Uh, but that seems to have stopped. Um, so does this in any way put any fear in you that, you know, these persons might resort to using bombs once again? Well, uh, the reality is that, yes, of course, who are the Boko Haram? I have been touching 
before many, many professionals in the setting, the use of IEDs, uh, that is a uh, explosive device. Yes. Making the coffee thing. Now, uh, it is very clear, this is a testimony, so, it's a saying that there is a clear relationship or a clear behavior in the way of which the different groups of criminals are operating in Northwestern Nigeria and not only in Northwestern Nigeria, but Nigeria as well. Because it is like a surprising order that people we cannot achieve it are talking about it. So, and um, it is very clear that there is probably some information that this amount of money and this amount of other value, value, value are being transported to the center, whereby many of the elites are moving with expensive phone, and uh, probably some of them are even moving with cash, a uh, huge amount of cash, uh, probably the, 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 the forex, not only given to the local uh, denomination, probably in the, the dollar denomination, pound salary denomination, and so on and so forth. So, uh, if we start targeting the, the, the trend by our accepting our ability that we can use a bomb or any detonating uh, I, uh, uh, explosive device, it's an opportunity so that we can earn more, uh, 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 more, more, more attention and then have the ability and tell the whole world that we are still on ground. And then they also expose that it is not only the Boko Haram that are operating in the northeastern part of the country who are, are, are probably saying that they target the country, which I have so many questions on that. Uh, we are not discussing Boko Haram, uh, but I know I have so many questions on that issue of repentance, uh, surrendering, or whatever the form is. So uh, it is very clear that the use of uh, exclusive device, device against the trend against uh, the, 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 the goal far away to probably attack even the, the airports, not only the, 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 the trend. Because that is the message. The message for Nigerian government, message to Nigerian government, message to every responsible person in Nigeria that it is better for us to look at ourselves, I want to have our self ourselves that we to and set the land before it is killed for all of us. Okay, uh, let's quickly talk about, could we have prevented this attack on the rail tracks? I mean, following uh, mm -hmm. the fact that you've had vandals, you know, in the past month uh, across the country, attacking, uh, vandalizing and taking, you know, uh, some critical components of the rails. As far as I'm concerned, uh, from what I, 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 I understand, I have been using the trend between Kaduna and Abuja and Abuja to uh, Kaduna. And I have used the trend in other countries where I do it. So, where I, I privilege, I have the privilege to do it. So, I, my assumption up to the day when this event happened is that the trend is the fastest, more safer than even the aeroplane. Why? Because there are a number of stations. Uh, if you look at the rail station, uh, uh, whatever station, you have so many stations in the train where the train needs to stop. Sometimes, where it used to uh, stop for the one waiting for the other one, if you are going for the dinner, you have to wait for another one to come from Abuja, the park, because it, uh, they don't have enough rail line. So, what I do is two is that there is a striking demand for which the authority of the Nigeria Radio Corporation, in collaboration and partnership with security agents, as well as the forest marshal and other communities around the rail, where the rail passes through, there is organized security and safety measures using the modern technology of the CCTV and other things, that they can be able to check if there is anything along the line of the, of the, of the rail uh, in between one 
facing another. So that if there is any suspicion, any intelligence that uh, through the partnership with the community, through the partnership with the uh, forest nation, through the partnership with the other uh, civil uh, vigilant uh, structures, as well as the formal organized security structure and the intelligence monitoring uh, started to be put in place. This could have been actually prevented. But what happens have told me that if it is something, the some scenario, the some strategy, the, the way people are, are, are not being provided uh, the, the adequate and right food, using the right food intelligence to manage and preserve the lives and property in our remote villages, towns, uh, urban and semi urban communities, something that is being dealt with the managing the government, which means that a direct uh, railway station is not in any way ready to provide security. So I want people to be careful and I want people to be uh, to, to know that even the the, the term is not there. It's no longer there. I cannot in any way trust them anymore. All right. So now I want you to, you know, uh, talk, you know, with specifics, if you can, as to what must be done if we if we believe that the Nigerian government is serious about ensuring that travelers on the roads and, you know, through the rail lines and in the air are completely safe. Um, what would you say must be done in response to what we're discussing this morning, the attack on the rail line? Um, in order for the NRC to be back in uh, fully operation now and um, to ensure that travelers are safe? Well, uh, what I would say is that uh, the intelligence team, the joint intelligence team need to put their thoughts together and work more closely with the forest marshal if they are available. And if they are not available, the Nigeria Railway Corporation I suggest strongly that if they really want to sustain the temple and rebuild the confidence of the public and at the same time uh, sustain and manage the security and intelligence wisely, there is need to have a kind of uh, a unit, a specific unit for a kind of engagement of forest marshal and using them in kind of um, a partnership and um, collaboration with other formal and uh, non-formal uh, security agencies. And at the same time, there is also need to conduct a profiling assessment of at least 10 kilometer radius left and right between the, the barrel line, right, especially in the areas of uh, Jere, the areas of uh, Gidambusa, the areas of uh, Ida, the, the areas of uh, uh, Aduwanja, the areas of Gadarmala uh, uh, um, uh, Momo, the areas of uh, uh, Achilubu, the areas of Katari, because these are the most notorious, some of the most notorious, uh, most dangerous parts of Kaduna Abuja red line and also Kaduna Abuja uh, 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 route if you are going by road. So um, there is need to uh, uh, also conduct a kind of uh, use of uh, collaboration between the, the, the air spy and the, 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 the soldiers, the Nigerian army on the ground to move around and swipe some of those areas and also for government to extend a kind of security. The uh, National Army Airway has started a very good job and uh, I'm really commending him for that. And I will appreciate it and be good if he will come back because they started secreting some of the forest, difficult, uh, some of the thick forests that we have, which uh, the criminals are using as a hideout. And then I know there was also uh, initiatives in the 80s and the 70s from the, from the records up to the 90s 
whereby uh, a, a forest marshal, as well as the the, the other uh, the, the, the other hunters, are uh, collaborating and partnering with security agencies within the local communities around. So if that could be done, and then uh, also government also uh, kind of the Nigerian local cooperation and the government of Nigeria to have a kind of a scanner that will be used or any other device that can be can test the presence of the the, the uh, probably uh, if there is a bomb or any of the explosive device put uh, together there so that something can be managed and at the same time there is need to have a monitoring team either by on air or by road or intelligence that will be moving around the, between one station and another, so that they can have a reporting system wherever they can be reporting to the nearby uh, station. Like I said, there are so many stations in between. So there is need to have a tracking mechanism whereby uh, one station uh, will be reporting to another, and then the radio message that they are using. Probably it uh, cannot cover up to one station or another, it's need to have that. And also to have other communication mechanisms uh, that will uh, uh, be utilized in striking uh, to ensure that will prevent the, 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 uh, any occurrence in the future. Okay, uh, don't you also think that uh, maybe it's high time we deploy, uh, deploy uh, security surveillance camera on our you know the trainways and also uh, uh you know the roads as well just to help mitigate against all of these attacks well i, I don't think the, uh, the the cctv is sustainable but there may be other security devices which i will not want to discuss it in, on, on a public uh, uh domain uh, simply because there is need for us also to support the security uh, operatives in doing their job, despite the fact that we know that they are not doing uh, up to, they are not doing enough because they are handicapped. They don't have budget, they don't have training, they don't have space, they don't have orientation. Uh, so they are not serious and they are not perfected. Most of them, they don't have passion, no compassion and no cohesion, and then no organized uh, uh, kind of partnership and um, uh, synchronization and synergy between the security agencies. But there are other devices which are more sensitive than CCTV that can be utilized. Yeah. So uh, nobody, government should not, government and Nigeria Railway Corporation should not even allow anybody to know about those uh, devices. And these devices can be used in kind of scanning and the scheming and finding out and fishing out any other criminals and uh, getting him or her or getting them wherever they may be and whatever they want to do, uh, their rubbish and engaged uh, uh, behavior. Well, um, and I believe, um, uh, also an expert on the, uh, um, the criminality or, or the terrorist behavior therapy within the, the forest of West Africa. I know there are a different groups and category of a type of criminals, known and unknown criminals. But to some extent, as far as I'm concerned, the way Nigerian government is dealing with the criminals and criminality uh, in, in managing situation in our forest, uh, be rest assured, I swear to God, we are breeding criminals. We are not managing security uh, situation. We are breeding criminals. And then in the next few years, it is going to be worse if we didn't change the direction and the approach we are using now. Uh, Mr. Getso. Um, in the interim, um, uh, the trains have been suspended along that um, line. Um, I'm sure that they will be working towards bringing them back. Um, but I, I want you to, I know you, you know, may not have um, proper information on this, you know, but you know, just to paint a clearer picture of what exactly we're dealing with here, um, how do you think that these bandits made it to the train, uh, to the rail lines? Um, how do they move? Are those places, you know, motorable, maybe with um, motorcycles? Um, how did they get to that particular place, you know, where they planted the, the, the explosives? 
Um, and is it, is it possible that they can be spotted, you know, on their way there? Also, would we now need to have armed um, officers and policemen on um, those trains um, to ensure that passengers feel somehow safer uh, moving forward? Well, um, the, the reality is you don't have personnel. We don't have personnel. We don't have adequate personnel to do that. And these uh, uh, criminals, uh, bandits, terrorists, whatever you, you call them, based on my knowledge, with uh, the, the, the forest and uh, some of the high tourist terrain and some of the cliffs and um, uh, some of the difficult places, yes, of course, they use different strategies. They use motorcycles, they move by road, they uh, move in disguise. Some of them use uh, uh, um, vehicles as uh, drivers. Some of them even use expensive vehicles, pretending. And um, some of them are, are mixing up with the communities, with affected communities around, so they, they conduct their activities around. Uh, and um, uh, yes, of course, they can be spotted, but the problem, how do you how do you conduct a kind of monitoring and tracking that you can get them spotted and then deal with the situation when you don't have uh, the personnel, the adequate personnel to, to do the job? I have been advising the government, if we really want to be serious, why can't we recruit at least uh, 40 from each of the polling units? So if you have 10 polling units in a given political world, when you recruit 40 times 10, you have 400 between the age of 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, who are very agile. And we have so many unemployed, unemployed youth roaming around. Even if they don't know, remember that during the colonial administrators when they come, when our people cannot understand uh, left and right. They use a strategy. For those who are not educated, you use a strategy. So if you have 400 in the world, and then in a given local government you have 10 political world, then you have 4,000. So if you can recruit 4,000 from each of the political, of each local government in Nigeria or from the front uh, local government, and distribute them in all the security agencies based on the needs, the Navy, Air Force, Army, DSS, civil defense, immigration, custom, police, uh, NIA, and so on and so forth. You distribute them accordingly. And then those who are not educated, after giving them good and adequate training, you engage them as a, a forest marshal. We need to, to revert back to the old strategy, which we, we believe, when I say we, uh, I mean, we the professional and expert who know who have been uh, who know the 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 the, 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 the forest character. There must be utilization of uh, uh, forest marshal, either using them in a formal structure or as a non-formal structure, either using them as educated or as uh, illiterate, but to be engaged by the government and government to know what they are doing. So probably these are some of the things that need to be put in place uh, before the, uh, the, 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 the train is uh, turned back. But at the same time, government should work hard, and the Nigeria Radio Corporation should also work hard with uh, relevant authorities, security agencies, and the other non formal uh, intelligence structures available within the communities of the operations to be sure that the train is back in no longer time. Because the longer, the, the more they delay, the more they build the confidence of the criminals that the government is even afraid of them. Government doesn't have the capability that they will also generate momentum and have more confidence and believe that they can do worse than what they have tested just being posted. 
All right. So I just think that you just took the question right of uh, right out of my mouth because I was going to ask you how long do you think that you know the train services should be uh, suspended for? And like you have rightly mentioned, you're saying it's, it shouldn't be for too long, uh, so that it does not you know kill the morale of the people. And this should also be a means where the Nigerian government should uh, step up and uh, boost the confidence of the people uh, in the combat against insecurity and insurgents in Nigeria. Uh, well, well, at maximum, it shouldn't last more than two weeks. At maximum, if the highest, that is the highest. Well, it depends on, but you know, if really the intelligence and the spiritual operatives and government will sit on the responsibility, within, within the middle of the next week, they should allow the church to continue. Well, it depends, you know, because when, when they are done fixing. I mentioned, yeah, the, Mr. Gato, would, uh, wouldn't it also uh, uh, be dependent on when they, when they, they fix? There. there is no formal. Forest Can you hold on, Mr. Getso? Yes. Uh, apologies. I'm, I'm asking, wouldn't it also be dependent on when they fix the damaged rail line, um, or rail track, rather, b before they can now, of course, ensure that it is safer to travel on? It, it, it might be more than two weeks from what, what it looks like. I'm not to believe it's going to happen. Even though I'm not a technical person, I'm not an engineer, uh, so I cannot uh, satisfy that. Uh, but from my common understanding, common knowledge as a layman in that regard, because that is uh, not my area. Yes. If they can, I think they should quickly try and fix it within three days. That is the red line, that the vandalized red line. Yes. And then the red will come back to operation within a week or less than that, at maximum. Yeah, but, but I mean, you're also not going to be throwing people back on the on the road or back on on the rail simply because you fix the train and you fix the, the track. You also need to ensure that people feel safe. Um, and so, would one week or two weeks while they are fixing these things be enough for them to also ensure that there's no repeat of this incident? Let me tell you something. No responsible Nigerian believe that Nigeria is safe. Nigeria is not safe. Nigerian territory, the whole Nigerian territory is not safe. So we are just using confidence to move and to come out so and that prayer. we will not die in our homes. But the reality, Nigeria is not a safe land. Because there is nowhere that you can move even two kilometers. Two kilometers, nowhere in Nigeria that you can move two kilometers with confidence and belief that you can go two kilometers and come back two kilometers confidently believing that nothing will happen to you. Even in Lagos, even in Port Harcourt, even in Abuja, even in the city of Manila, even within the government uh, houses, I want to tell you, even within the presidential villa, people are not safe. All right. Check with the intelligence. They will tell, tell you that there are so many of the devices even around the presentation villa that are not working. Even the so-called CCTV cameras that were installed in other places in Africa, they are not working. And you don't have adequate personnel. So Nigeria is not a safe land. Okay. So we, we should stop so deceiving so. ourselves that uh, we will fix this in, in 10 months. No, let them, let them do something so that we will discourage the criminals in having the confidence and conviction that they have the capability to fight and all they have the, the, the ability, the capability to, to do and undo. Government need to preempt them. But the more, the longer the government allow this thing to, 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 to delay, to, uh, delay the process of allowing the, the, the train to resume, the more you are building the confidence of the criminals and then you are fading away for other for other criminalities to emerge. As I mentioned, remember in my statement I made mention one word. I refuse to elaborate it for a reason because I'm speaking of public domain. We are breathing criminality in the world. Government well, institutions yeah, so. and security agencies are breathing, are helping in breeding criminals and criminality in all parts of the country. Going by the way, we are managing yeah. Security situation. Mr. Getso, um, we, we would have to let it go here. Um, it's, a, it's a conversation that is extremely important and can go on for days. 
Um, we hope for the best and we hope that the Nigerian government understands the angles that you've pointed out and the things that need to be done. But thanks for the work that you do and remember to always stay safe while you travel and uh, of course continue to gather intelligence um, um, for security. Have a great weekend. Well, that's so much we can take at this point in time. If you uh, missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to be part of the conversation. You can also check out YouTube. It's at Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Boko. You have a great weekend. And I am Saogi Obama. <laughs>